So I don't have any fancy title slides, so we go with this. That one. So yeah, Dr. Nestor Isunima and I joined Microsoft in January, and I work in the Mystic, or Microsoft Threat Intelligence Center. And uh, yeah, welcome to my talk. So first I want to thank a few people. Uh, first, Stephen Cyphers for the title. So he was like presenting the same thing, but for NTLM last year in this same conference. So I stole that from him. And then uh, Christopher Bass for checking the information, what I'm going to present to you. Um, yeah, so this is my fourth, fifth time in this building, third time as a speaker, uh, sorry, in blue hat. Uh, and first time in a row uh, as a speaker, first time in this room, and first time as a Microsoft employee. So a lot of new things to me too. Yeah, so the title, deprecating Azure AD graph is easy and otherwise we tell to ourselves. So what does deprecation mean? So deprecation means to intend to retire, okay? So it's just want to make that distinction here. I thought that the deprecation is something else, but that's what I've been told. Okay, four things. So first, introduction to uh, Azure AD or Enter ID, uh, both work. And then I'm gonna talk about how we can detect using those APIs or this API, how to prevent that and why. There's a reason for that. Also, what should I do when things are retired? This works right, fine, okay. Uh, so, Let's start with like, um, what do we have actually? Uh, so there are uh, three APIs, and a little, uh, three and a little bit more modules. So the first API was called Provision API. That's undocumented API, and that has been there a long time. Uh, and it, was, uh, it didn't have, the content was SOAP, so it was XML-based web service. So, it wasn't that handy, I would, I suppose. Uh, there's one module that is using that, and that's called MS Online. Who remembers that? Yeah. Even that's... though it's using something very early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then they, there's another API called Azure AD Graph API. Uh, that's based on JSON. And I guess that would be easier to implement like web application, like portals to use API that talks JSON instead of, instead of a SOAP, I, I presume. And the last one is Microsoft Graph API, which I think Miriam was talking about in, in, in her like, uh, previous talk. But let's put this on timeline, okay? So it was quite fun to do this, so uh, I've been wondering that why this deprecation have been so difficult before I took Microsoft, and because now I work for Microsoft, I could find that out, but not entirely. So there are some days that we don't know because people don't know. They are so old things. So uh, back in 2018 or something, uh, there was a thing called BPOS, or Business Productivity Online Suite. Anybody? <laughs> yeah? So that was before Office 365, and then we had this provision API. And actually, it turned out that even though we have not documented this, people have been using that. So they reverse engineered that like I did for my internal uh, toolkit. So yeah, it was just funny to hear that others did that too. And then at some point, we got this MS Online module, which I still like a lot because I remember those comments from my heart. Then around this time, we published Azure AD, Graph API, and then a module for that. Okay, now this doesn't look, oh, too fast. So there seems to be a buffer of some kind. Okay, one more, come on, yes. Now we are back on track. So a new module. Uh, as ready or as ready pre preview. So there's two versions, one for like uh, supported commands and another one was for not so supported or beta one, is, if you will. And now these modules were for administering the directory part of the cloud. So Android or as ready. 
Nothing else, just that. Uh, and also, I remember it was back in 20 something, maybe when the Azure AD graph, sorry, Azure AD module came out. Uh, so I was getting a lot of emails that we are deprecating this MS Online module. Please try to use the Azure AD module. But that didn't work out that well. But then finally, we got this new API, Microsoft Graph API. And this is for everything. So it's not just the directory part, but everything like email and Teams and uh, SharePoint, OneDrive, anything. Um, and then we said this four years ago. So now we are going to deprecate those old APIs and modules. And again, deprecation means intent to retire. So we are going to retire those at some point. Now that point has been moving, as you probably know. And there are some reasons for that. Uh, so then we, yeah, it, it still works, published a module for Microsoft Graph API called Microsoft Graph. It, it's, uh, it's also called like, um, uh, I think official name is Microsoft Graph API SDK, as in software development kit. And that actually quite, it's a good description for the module because it is created automatically from the graph like description, graph API descriptions or specification. Now, why was this so difficult to retire then? Well, it didn't have all the features than the other modules had, and that happened around 2022. So now we had what we call like a feature parity, which means now the API and also the module has the same functionality than the previous ones had. So that was one of the biggest reasons why we uh, haven't been able to retire those. And there's one reason also for um, admins. Who of you are administrators? Okay, now you who li li like lift your hand, how many of you are developers? Not so many, but some. So the problem here was that uh, MS Online module and Azure Ready module were meant for administrators to administer things. The Microsoft Graph is more like for programmers, so that they can do programs or develop things. So admins didn't like that because they know that what they want to do, but they didn't want to like learn how the API works. So which API protocol and so on. So that was also the reason why I didn't like the module. But now in June, we published uh, something new. So we have now microsoftgraph.entra module that is meant for admins, by admins. So you can just Again, use the module for administrating the directory part. So we should have everything now up and running. So in April, we're going to retire the provision API and the module. And then we are also going to retire the Azure AD module. API should be there till uh, uh, 1st of July next year. But after that, that's it. I promise you. <laughs> yeah, so this is the timeline. Okay, now the top three reasons why this has been so difficult. So the first one is that there has been some feature parity things which we have now like uh, closed, so there's no gap anymore, so everything should be there. There are some apps created by us that doesn't support that yet, but I'll get back to that uh, later. And then there have been some active uses by customers. Uh, so last year it was a couple of hundred thousands uh, of uh, tenants we were using as already graph still, but the uh, number is going down now at least. Next year this time there shouldn't be nobody using that anymore. Okay, uh, so then detecting API usage and why this is important, I'll tell it to you in a minute. But first, let's see how the cloud works. One slide, okay. So we have a module here, I was the module, and if I want to do something, I need first to authenticate. So I go to enter ID and say, this is client this, I want to access that resource. 
And if uh, entry ID likes my proof of identity, and I have a access to that resource and to that application, I will get access token. And then with, with that access token, I will go to call the API I want to call. So that's how cloud works. Simple, one slide. Now, here is this client ID. So when I authenticate it, when I got the access token, the access token contains which client ID I'm using. It also has information that which resource ID I'm using. So these are important things. So the client and the resource. Okay, so uh, what can we detect currently? So for provision API, we can detect the authentication part. There's nothing there for that. And we can detect the API calls. For Azure AD Graph, okay, now we can see the signing. So if you are signing in uh, with any client to use that API, you can see that in the signing logs, but you can't see if you are accessing the API. And that's why bad guys like about this, because you can't detect that. And that's why there are tools like my in internals, it's still using Azure AD Graph API because I haven't bothered to update that. Um, and, but there is in Entro ID recommendations, if you go to uh, Azure AD portal, sorry, Entro ID portal, oops, uh, and you go to overview, and then you change the recommendation tab, it should so, show you which apps are using Azure AD. Even though that you can detect that in, in, in any way else, you can see that from there. There are some first party applications that doesn't show up there yet, but we are gonna fix that. And then for the Microsoft Graph, you can see both the signing events and also the usage events. And that's a good thing, okay? Now, uh, how to detect, so the uh, API, let's start with that. Again, provisioning API, you can detect. And why? Because it's using the same client ID and resource ID than the Azure AD Graph is using. But uh, for Azure AD Graph API, so if you can see the resource ID in the signing logs, then you can, well, then you know that somebody has logged in and, and get the access token for that. And same with Microsoft Graph. And for applications then, Okay, so you can detect using the MS Online module uh, and as ready because they are the same. And then also the default client for Microsoft Graph API is that one. So if you look to signing logs, you can detect these kind of things. <coughs> okay, then preventing. This is a hard part. So uh, for different APIs, so for provisioning an API, you can actually disable the whole API. So there's a thing called uh, authorization policy where you can uh, set that block MSOL PowerShell equals one or true, I can't remember. But anyways, if you do that setting, nobody can use that API anymore, regardless of the client they are using. The other APIs you can't switch off, basically. Okay, <coughs> now for the PowerShell modules. So for MS Online module and Azure AD, uh, you can't switch that off as such, but you can um, choose that you require uh, uh, assignment for those, for those applications. So you go to that application uh, in the original enterprise application, can't remember. Uh, in the portal, you click that, okay, you can use this, but it requires assignment. So only those people who are assigned this application ID can use that module. And for Microsoft Graph, you can use conditional access policy where you can block that. But again, even though that you block the clients, it doesn't block the access to APIs. So you need to remember that. Those are two different things. Two things, you have the client and you have the API. You can block APIs except the first one but you can block the clients which users are usually using. So if you don't want them to use those 
powerful commands anymore, just do that. So you can prevent that, actually. But this doesn't stop the hackers, but the normal usage, okay? So, uh, what to do then when these things, when the, uh, because these things are going to be retired, so what should I do? Oh, that's very small text, okay. <laughs> so, they are microservices that are using uh, APIs, Azure Graph API on the back, back end. You don't need to care about those, we will fix them. Uh, then we have some Microsoft like uh, clients that are still using those uh, Azure AD Graph APIs. So we have the, the Azure AD Postal module I just talked talk to you about, and we are gonna return that in a minute. And then we have like uh, AC CLA and uh, AC PowerShell modules. So they are already new versions, just upgrade the existing one, and that will be okay. And there are other applications that already support MS Graph API, so just update them. But there are something, some clients that uh, doesn't work yet, our bad, but we are gonna fix those too. So just keep, you know, yourself posted uh, that what is happening, follow us in social media and so on, and when the new Clients are there, just upgrade and that it, that's it. So the biggest thing here is those PowerShell modules because we are deprecating those. You might have scripts for administrating stuff, like who does have? I have a lot. So that's the biggest thing. Those clients things, they are just update, but, but it still requires something from your side. But the biggest problem I would say is the, the uh, PowerShell modules. So what can we do with those? So we have a couple of uh, things. So the first one is that now we, because we have that Microsoft Graph module, just update your scripts, meaning that rewrite everything and learn to be a programmers. So that's not for everybody. Or you can use the new module called Microsoft.Graph.Entra and again rewrite all your codes again. But it's a little, a little bit easier because you don't need to be a programmer, just replace the commands with other, other new commands. Uh, or then you can use the graph.entra module and there's a new function or uh, commentlet that says enable aliases, which means that now you can use those uh, Azure ready module commands as is, so you don't need to do anything. Well, most of that, at least it should work like that. So this is like for you guys who are administrators, so you need to do, try that at least. It could be like, okay, it's in preview now, so it's not GA, but it works. Okay, um, it's always nice to be a last presenter before a bit being like you and something. Uh, and uh, I didn't have any demos, so it's a little bit shorter presentation, so. With that, thank you for having me.